Welcome to the videos for chapter two. In chapter two, we're going to take a second look at what a C++ program is, what the elements of the program are, and some of the rules uh, that have to be uh, adhered to. And we're going to get some examples of consequences of violating those rules. Uh, in the notes, you will see sections in the book where certain things are discussed. The organization of this presentation is different; does not follow this outline. All right, we're going to start here. Uh, here's a sample C++ program, and we want to we want to highlight certain features. The first line is called a comment line, and the notation is that the line begins with two forward slashes. A comment line is not compilable code. It is instead information that's being uh, conveyed to a human reader. So this is given information about the program. It has nothing to do with the program carrying out its function. The second line found include, as you know, is called a preprocessor directive, which says include code about the I.O. stream in the compilation process. And we know that the I.O. stream gives you the capability of reading and writing. Using namespace standard is a line that is one of these lines that I say do it because I said so. To explaining is a little, is too complicated at this point, but always include this. Uh, it will simplify the amount of code that you have to write uh, later on. The beginning of your program proper is the line that says int main. Notice a couple things that all of this stuff so far is all lowercase because all of the uh, C++ and Unix is a uh, um, case sensitive language, which means there's a, there's a difference between a lowercase i and uppercase i. For simplicity, all elements, all predefined elements of the C++ language are lowercase. All right? All right. The beginning of the program starts here. This brace and this brace uh, surrounds the actual body of the program. This is called a block delimiter, and it's the beginning of a sequence of statements. In this case, the main contains two statements, this statement and this statement. This is a delimiter. A delimiter means something that either marks the beginning or marks the end of something. This is the end delimiter for the main program. Again, this uh, is a summary of, of what you just saw. Let's look at some of the special characters. A programming language consists of certain symbols that have some very specific meaning. Also consists of certain words or vocabulary that have special meaning. And finally, a programming language gives the programmer the ability to create elements of his own. All right. Double slash means comment. The pound sign, as we've seen so far, indicates that you have a preprocessor directive. Um, open and close braces are used when you pound include something. So if we go back, we say pound include what? The brackets here are very important. The brackets really say that the thing that you want to include is already a part of the C++ system. Right. Uh, we see open and close parens. We saw that in main. After you say the word main, you must put the open and close parens. Uh, you have open and close braces, set braces, which we said are delimiters for the body of the function. A double quote is a delimiter. And it surrounds it. It's used to identify the beginning and the end of a string. And a string is any sequence of characters. A semicolon terminates a statement. And single quotes delimit a single character. Now, as I said, C++ allows the programmer to create things. 
what are the sorts of things a programmer might create? Well, first of all, it might, uh, the programmer may create variables because we discussed what is a variable. A variable is the name of data that's stored by your program. So the programmer has free reign at what to call their variables. The names used for variables is called an identifier. An identifier should always be descriptive. If the, if the data that you're talking about is a student's name, it makes sense to call the variable either name or student name. To call it M uh, that has no relationship to what it contains makes it hard for the program to be understood. A restriction. The keywords or reserve words in C++ can never be used as programmer-defined identifiers. What's the rule for identifiers? It must begin with a, a, a character, an alphabetic character or underscore, followed by alphabets, digits, or underscores. Alphabetic characters can either be upper or lower case. Of course, if you write it one time with uppercase and write it one time with a lower case, you have different identifiers. Here are some examples of valid and invalid identifiers. Uh, what's invalid here? cannot have a period. What's invalid here? The first, the first character must be either an underscore or an alphabetic character. What's wrong here? An identifier can only contain alphabetic characters, underscores, and digits. Now what's a comment? A comment is used to provide information about the purpose of the program or the origin of the program. And the style that we will use in this class is that every program you submit will have a comment section where you identify yourself as the author, you will identify the purpose of the program, um, and you will also uh, describe the variables that you create. There are two forms of comments. One is very safe, and that's a single line comment, and they begin with a double forward slash. And notice that in this case, the comment can appear to the right of some code. Here we're declaring a variable length, and over here we're describing what this variable is. All right. Notice also some comments can appear above code. So we're saying calculate the area of the rectangle, the actual code, or the actual statement that performs this, you will find underneath. All right. Let me make a distinction. What we have here in English, the variables are like nouns. So when we're talking about nouns, we can describe the noun to the, on the same line that we create the variable. When we're talking about actions, I prefer that you put a comment for the action, describe the action, and be careful now. Underneath it, put the actual code that carries out the action. One more thing we do is we put a special marker. We form this comment a different way. The style is slash slash dash bar and describe an action followed by one or more lines of code. This is what we call an algorithm comment. This is a descriptive comment. This is an algorithm comment. Another comment style is a multi-line comment. And let's take a look here. It starts with slash star, and it continues until you see a star slash. All right? There can be as many lines without any comment markers as you choose, but you've got to be careful that you, what you start with slash star, you terminate with star slash. This is a little dangerous because sometimes it's possible to forget to end this comment. If you forget to end the comment, certain statements in your program may be gobbled up by this comment. All right. Now, I'm going to demonstrate with a simple program some of the concepts we just learned. Here is a simple program we saw earlier. And what I want to do now is talk about it some. I'm going to make some common mistakes so that you can see what happens. 
let's say run it right now. We run it and it produces hello there. Now let's go in and tamper with things. Let's make some mistakes on purpose. Let's go in and, and take this bracket out. Take this out and take that out. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's try to run it. We're going to get an error. And the error is saying what? Pounding include, expects either you to have quotes around something or the brackets around something. You put brackets around it when what you want to include is a system file. And, it can, and as we said, IO stream is a system file. So you got to put brackets around it. What happens if we leave off the pound sign? What's going to happen? Error. It says, include does not name a type. Um, and it also says, see out right here was not declared in this code. What is C out? Well, C out is the ability to do output. Where, what is the ability to, to, to do output lie? It lies in the system file called IO stream. So if we don't include it properly, you cannot do C out. So we fix that. All right, what if we take this out? What do you think is going to happen? Let's start thinking like the compiler now. Compiler says what? Whatever you start, you must end. Whatever you open, you must close. So we are opening the block for the body of the function, but we don't see a close. So the compiler ought to tell you something like, whoops, you never ended the program. So let's see what happens. It says unused variable class size. That's OK. That's a warning. But it says the error expected this at the end of the input, and it did not occur. All right. Now let me stop here. I'm trying to make a point to you. The point is this. There are times when you need to make mistakes on purpose so that you can see how the compiler will tell you what mistake you made. You're going to make mistakes unintentionally, so why don't you make some intentionally so you can practice? Have you ever seen a baby learning how to walk? One of the first things they learn to do is how to fall. And then they can walk once they learn how to fall. So teach yourself how to fall. That concludes the first.